Pay attention to the voice in your head. The enemy wants to take you down. So I'm Dr. Looney and I'm a psychiatrist. I know we all have an inner voice. Most of us have a running commentary of our life. Sometimes that voice is calm and consistent. At other times it can be frustrated or frantic, confused or chaotic. Now paying attention to our thoughts can be helpful, but sometimes we have to learn to pay them less heed and take what the voices say with a grain of salt. Recently, I've come to sense danger whenever I hear the word you in my thought life, if it's referencing me. Of course, it's one thing for me to say to myself or to God, I feel stupid, I feel like such a loser, seems like I never get it right. It's another thing if that voice in my head says, you are stupid, you're a loser, you'll never get it right. Can you hear the difference? The first is anchored in my feelings, my perceptions, my fears, which sometimes can be rather dark. The second is a judgment, an accusation, a shaming, and condemnation. In the first case, I'm communicating my pain or my shame from an authentic place, and if I direct my grievance toward heaven, God can hear and lift me up out of that dark place. But when I'm speaking to myself in judgment, I'm consigning myself to the pit. So. When you hear a voice talking to you in second person, there is almost surely a second person in your head. And unless that voice has identified itself as the voice of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or your Father in heaven, then it is almost surely the voice of the enemy. John 10, um, Jesus says that the shepherd comes in through the gate, and the gatekeeper knows his voice. I believe that your consciousness can discern the voice of God. But the thief, Jesus says, does not come to the gate. And for me, this indicates that Satan gets into your head without you ever knowing it. In this way, you're tempted to accept those thoughts as your own, even though they're coming straight from the pit of hell. And the thief, Jesus says, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Think about it. All those negative accusations and condemnations are Satan's specialty. Scripture refers to him as the accuser of the brethren. You are worthless, he says. What were you thinking? That was so stupid. She doesn't care about you. You're never going to get it right. You're an idiot. Of course, he doesn't identify himself. He never says to me, Paul, this is Satan. You are a piece of shit. No, the serpent is more subtle than that. And what about the times that voice in your head is addressing you with a positive message in second person? Ooh, you're amazing. You're way better looking than she is. Nobody appreciates how talented you are. You deserve better than this. Someday you'll show them. You didn't do anything wrong. They took it the wrong way. He deserved what he got. They're just jealous of you. You should give them a piece of your mind. All of these messages that defend you or prop you up can lead to more alienation from others. Satan likes to tell us, you're a good person. They just don't understand. No one really cares about what you've been through. You're different than they are. You can't depend on anyone else. You're on your own. And those who struggle with self-destructive urges know that the voices get even worse. When you're depressed, those voices get more insistent, especially if we isolate and don't open up to others to confess what we're feeling. You can't go on like this, the voice might say. No one should have to put up with this. It's too much. It's never going to get better. Just end it. You're a burden. You bring everyone down. Everyone would be better off without you. Just do it. The voices get dark. And I'm telling you, you got to learn to discern where they're coming from. When the voices in our heads talk trash about us, the remedy is to turn to what God says and let him speak truth to our hearts through the words of scripture. There's a beautiful song by Lauren Daigle. It's called You Say, and it does a great job of showing the power of turning to God and believing what he says. When the voices in my head are saying things about me that are negative, and may be true, God has a final say, and he speaks truth. We should never let what is true speak louder than the truth. For instance, it's true that I am sexually perverse. The truth is that I am pure and perfect in Christ. I've been defeated in the past, but God is leading me in victory. The flesh and the spirit may always be in conflict, but I have peace with God. 
through Jesus Christ. In my marriage, it's true that my wife Terry and I trigger each other and sometimes seem completely wrong for each other. But I know the truth is that God brought us together and uses those difficult times to grow us up and teach us about loving someone who is radically different. Of course, what the Lauren Daigle song does is to put what God says in the spotlight. When I put myself at the center of my attention and turn the spotlight back on myself and address myself as you, I see all of my considerable weaknesses or my strengths leading into the shame or pride. It's a big lose either way. But you know, when I put God at the center, making him the focus of my thoughts by using the word you to address him, I place him at the center of my consciousness and the center of my universe. With him there as, as a focus of my conversation and consciousness, I remember again his magnificence and his amazing acceptance of me. There are times, of course, I can sense him in nature or worship or in quiet times, but there are times when I have to anchor my thoughts in what he reveals about himself in scripture, because in those times I can't feel or sense him or hear his voice. This is exactly what Jesus did when tempted in the wilderness. He relied not on personal experience or tangible proof, but on the authority of God's word. It is written. The word of God can trump anything that the enemy says to us. In the song you say, Lauren sings, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I'm strong when I, am, when I think I'm weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, you say I am yours. We belong to God, and it is precisely when we don't feel or hear him that it's most important to have his word in our hearts. When we are adrift in a sea of turmoil or troubles, we need to anchor in his truth. Or when, like Jesus, we're in a dry place, we're cut off from spiritual sustenance and starving for affirmation or affection, we must remind ourselves and the enemy that God is enough, that I won't stop worshiping, and that I will wait on him even when he seems to have vanished. So pay attention to what's happening between your ears. And if you hear the word you being applied to you, turn it around. Put your focus on God. Always make him the second person in your thought life. He is there for you. He cares for you. He loves you. And you can turn to him. I love you.